experimental probability. All right, so we do have a lot of vocabulary, but um, it should mostly be fairly familiar. So an experiment, this isn't necessarily the same as a science experiment. This is just any activity that has some probability associated with the outcome. So there's some, um, some aspect of chance, all right? A trial is one repetition of the experiment. So if my experiment is um, testing out a die, a trial is rolling that die one time. An outcome is one possible result of an experiment. The sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. So it's not only what I roll, but it's every single thing that could happen when I roll the die. Okay. Um, an event is an outcome of the experiment. The probability is how likely something's going to occur, and it's either going to be a fraction or decimal between 0 and 1, or it's going to be a percent up to 100. Okay. Um, experimental probability, that is instead of just saying, okay, there's a 1 in 6 chance of me rolling a 2 on a standard 6-sided die, that is me saying, okay, I'm going to roll this die 10 times and see how many times I roll a 2. Okay, so I'm conducting an experiment to test out the probability. Okay, and then prediction is just um, your estimate about what's going to happen um, during an experiment. Okay. All right, so concept one is identifying sample spaces and outcomes. So if I have a die, my sample space is going to be every possible result. Okay, so I've got a set with one, could, could roll a one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's my sample space. All right, those are all the possibilities and we're not going to worry about um, the chance of rolling and having it end on an edge or something like that. Okay. Um, and then my outcome, well, in this case, my outcome is going to be 3. Okay. So for this one, my sample space is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and my outcome is 3. Um, with coins or with other um, objects that you are um, testing your experiment with, you need to look at all possible outcomes, right? So if I'm just flipping this coin, my sample space is going to either be heads or tails, okay, for one coin, and in this case, my outcome would be heads, all right? Um, now, if I'm rolling, or if I'm flipping two coins, all right, now I've got to look at, okay, this could be heads. This one could also be heads. So my sample space would be heads, heads. Okay, this could be tails. With this being tails, it could be tails, tails. All right, and this is where um, I think mistakes happen a lot. You have to make sure that you're um, thinking about each one individually, right? So this one could be heads and this one could be tails, like is shown here. I have heads, tails, and a lot of times students say, okay, that's it. I could have two heads, two tails, or one head, one tails. But you have to remember, um, this heads, tails is for this coin being heads and this coin being tails. I also have to include in my sample space the fact that this coin could be tails and this one could be heads. Okay. There's four possible um, outcomes for this one, and um, my outcome here would be, hmm, not, oh, I'm lagging. my outcome here would be heads, tails. Okay, so just remember you're looking at all the possible outcomes, not just ones that seem like they have the same result, right? Heads, tails, tails, heads are actually two different outcomes.